everyone, it's Carrie. I'm back with a video on a Monday this time and not filming from my laptop. What a concept. I'm back with my bookshelf as my backdrop and, <clears throat> and I am coming to you with a very special video. Today is the Fearless Writing Tag and this was a collaboration between the adorable Kim Chance and my friend Ray, the Edward Gray on all of the social medias, that's his pen name, and he just debuted his YouTube channel and a podcast called The Fear Fallacy. And the fact that he was able to do a collab with Kim Chance for his debut video was so amazing and I'm so happy for him. I fangirled really hard when I saw that. Um, <laughs> Cause he and I both admire Kim. Um, I've watched all of her videos, so I will link both channels in the description and in the card. I will link both videos in the description and in the card. And you guys need to check him out and support Ray. He's wonderful. He's like the biggest sweetheart I've ever met. And um, yeah, so he and Kim did this tag. And he tagged me, so of course, to help out my friend, I had to do it as well. So, there's 10 questions. Um, they get kind of deep. <laughs> uh, and one of the things, before I say this, uh, before I continue, one of the things that um, I think prompted Ray to do this was Fear ha um, held him back on a lot of things. I think we all have experience with that. Um, he tried really hard to work on this video and get the um, podcast up and he was super nervous and he kept procrastinating and putting it off and you know thankfully that he has a great support system to um, to get him through it. His word of the year last year as well as Kim's was fearless and hearing their stories inspired me to do the same for this year. Last year my word was focus and it didn't work so well. And I've got a lot of things coming up this year that are kind of scary. So um, I think fearless is a good word for my word of the year. So let's get on with the tag. I'm so excited to be doing this. All right, number one. Lies. What is the biggest fallacy you're telling yourself about writing or being a writer? Um, I think like many people, I fall into the imposter syndrome trap, um, especially when I'm reading a book um, by an author that I admire. I'm currently reading The Savior's Champion by Jenna Morassi, and it's fantastic. And then I try to work on my own work and I go, oh my gosh, this is crap. I'm never going to be on the same level as Jenna. And to an extent, I know I'm right, but not in the way that my self-destructive brain means. Um, it's just that my journey as an author it, and a YouTuber and a creator in general is different than hers. Um, so... I can't compare my writing style and my experience to Jenna or Ray or Kim or someone super famous like Nora Roberts because we all have different experiences, different backgrounds, and different styles. So my writing is never going to be the same as any of theirs. So basically everybody is on their own journey and You can't compare yourself to someone else because it's never going to be the same because your experiences are different. And everyone's circumstances are different. Number two, starting new. Does the first draft scare you or motivate you? Right now it's scaring me. <laughs> Writing the first draft of Witches of Coolersville and New Witch on Campus, which is the, the direct sequel, uh, that was fun. That was motivating. It was super easy. I had all of these great ideas in my head. 
trying to get the third one down um, has been really hard because um, I'm not only going from a different character's point of view in this ver in this story, but I have some ideas that kind of take the direction a little bit darker, and I've never done anything like that. Um, so that's very scary. I'm, um, my stories have been relatively lighthearted, um, with a few exceptions of a few moments here and there, but even then, um, I had a friend tell me that I am the most PG new adult writer she's ever read. <laughs> um, just because I don't go into the gore and the graphic stuff unless it's absolutely necessary, but I'm working through it. Um, it doesn't help that I'm kind of multitasking. I'm trying to get the third book down in an outline form of some kind while also expanding books one and two. So <laughs> the multitasking thing is not helping me at all. So once I get the expansions done on books one and two and I get them sent off to my CPs and beta readers, I can concentrate on the next one. And hopefully I can get through that concern and that fear and I can start working on a more solid storyline. Number three, roadblock. What is your number one obstacle stopping you from writing? Me. <laughs> I am my number one obstacle and it has taken me years to admit that to myself. Um, I used to blame my day job and I blamed um, different obligations getting in the way like oh my gosh why did I sign up to uh, volunteer when I could be at home writing and um, I, I've blamed uh, family needing things like really horrible um, but I know that I am my biggest obstacle and I've tried to take measures now like using the forest app on my phone where um, you have this app up and you can't exit out of the app for a certain amount of time and then that and that's supposed to help me keep me off of like my games and stuff like that and another thing has been just finding balance between um, my work time as a writer my working at home time and my day job and life obligations and um, trying to get my video schedule under control. Um, but I do have a great support system and I have wonderful accountability buddies. Ray is one of them. And he's not afraid to give me that virtual kick in the butt like, hey, <laughs> why aren't you working? You were supposed to have this done. Um, so, um, or when I'm like wallowing in self-pity and, oh my god, this sucks and I'm never going to accomplish anything and, um, my friends and, and Joe are all there to, um, help me to keep going. And that helps a lot. Number four, reflect. How can you overcome the obstacles? <laughs> well, if I knew that, life would be so much easier. <laughs> but I think it's a matter of trial and error, as with anything in life. You can take all of the advice that people give you. You can watch all of the writing videos that are available online, and there are a lot. AuthorTube is full of advice. But what works for one person may not work for you. Um, an example, I'm going to go back to Jenna Moresi. Uh, she does quarterly goals. And I had tried that for a while. If you guys saw my previous videos from, oh gosh, a couple years ago. And I realized that that system no longer works for me. I will wait until the last possible minute of those three months and then go, oh my god, and 
like try and scramble and not necessarily get my best workout. So I have to break things down into smaller chunks and do monthly goals. Uh, some people plan things digitally on their phone, on their computer. Um, I follow Amy Landino who has this wonderful lifestyle and entrepreneurial channel and she is a big proponent of calendar blocking. She goes in her Google Calendar and she plans out everything. I can't do that. <laughs> I'm a pen and paper girl. I gotta have my planner and I have to write things down multiple times and that's how that's just how my brain think. Um, my brain you know processes stuff. So you take advice with a grain of salt and if it doesn't 100% work, you tweak it or you move on to something else. Number five, perfectionism. How can you challenge yourself to get past the perfectionism slash procrastination trap? Oh, this one's so hard. <laughs> perfectionism isn't really a problem. I've kind of accepted over the years that um, you're not going to be perfect, uh, especially when you're pumping out that first draft. It's going to suck. Um, I have a quote on my little vision board over on, the, on my wall that says, the first draft is as bad as your book is ever going to be. Um, edits are a part of writing. You have to keep going, keep trying, keep improving, keep tweaking um, to get it as best as you can as it can be. And it's never going to be perfect because everybody has a different definition of what's perfect and what makes a great book because art is so subjective. Uh, but my problem is the constant procrastination and not and it's not just in writing but getting my videos up on time and um maintaining a social media presence and doing things around the house <laughs> um i was supposed to run an errand this morning and i was gonna go i had to go to the bank and i was gonna go right at nine o'clock so I was there when they opened I could get in get out do my other stuff and come home and have plenty of writing time and recording time and all that kind of stuff yeah I didn't go until like lunchtime <laughs> so just because I was doing other things and mostly watching YouTube that's why I think that's why I try so hard to st stick to my planner and my schedule and my to-do list uh, because then I have everything written down and I can cross it off or check it off and it actually feels good um, crossing something off and then when I have something that I have to move to the next day then I know that I need to work a little harder and also I know exactly what I was doing Instead of writing, I was spending three hours watching YouTube or playing Angry Birds on my phone and knowing full well that I should have been writing. Number six, failure sucks. How can you grow from a failure? I think the key is not to let it dominate your mindset. You have to dust yourself off and figure out what you did wrong and figure out how you can fix it and keep going. Um, wallowing in your failure and your self-pity does not get you anywhere. Trust me, I've done it for years and it's taken me only recently to realize that just because there is a delay or something goes not quite according to plan, uh, yeah, you can have your moment of frustration and, you know, crying to your friends or whatever, but after you get over that, you have to keep going. You have to go, okay, this is what I can do differently. This is how I need to change. And this is how I'm going to now achieve my goal. And it's hard 
and it's just it's a lot of work but it is worth it in the end once you achieve your goal whatever that might be number seven rejection sucks too how can you grow and learn from rejection understanding that it's part of the process and not everyone is going to like your book or any of your artwork or anything whatever you're trying to do once again art is subjective and whether it's beta readers or you're querying an agent, they're not all going to think that you are the next uh, Stephen King and your book is going to be, you know, gold. But it's like the failure question. The key is not to dwell on it. There will be people that are going to love your book. There are going to be people that are going to not so like it. But as long as you put in the work and make it the best you can, it can be, then you know that you are putting out the best product that you can and you just enjoy when people like it and try not to worry about the people that don't because people are petty and stupid and I was just watching a video about um, one star reviews of, adapt of book to movie adaptations this girl named Jeanette, um, I met her on Jenna's Discord channel, and she was reading one-star reviews of book-to-movie adaptations or book-to-TV adaptations in terms of, um, they did Sherlock, um, and the reasons that people gave for one-star reviews were just so petty and ridiculous and kind of sadly hilarious. Um, so there will be those people, but yeah, you just, you gotta go past it and focus on the good. Number eight, how do you keep moving towards your goals? My planner and my notebooks. <laughs> I write everything down. I break it into manageable parts and then I get to work. I also factor in when things don't go as planned. And like last week I was asked to babysit at the last minute. And so that was six hours that I could have spent writing but I didn't. Or picking up an extra shift at work. Or just being exhausted and needing a self care day. So then I have to readjust my schedule. And that could mean writing on weekends. That can mean writing before bed or not going back to bed in first thing in the morning, um, not sleeping in, um, saying no to things like going out with girls and when you know you have to finish that chapter. It's a lot of adjusting, it's a lot of learning, but that's kind of how I'm working on it. Number nine, new year, new outlook. If fear wasn't holding you back, what would you be doing right now to further your writing dreams? Well, in terms of the publication process, it's not fear holding me back, it's lack of finances right now. Um, partly why I'm working so hard on my Patreon page and my Skillshare class to get a little extra income. But um, as I mentioned before, being scared of this new direction that I want to take my series, um, if fear wasn't holding me back, I would probably have like book seven outlined by now um, but I've just been so stuck and so nervous about the direction that I want to take this particular story that it's blocking me and I really need to try and like break through that and number 10 leap of faith what is one thing you plan to do this year even though it scares you Getting as much of this series at least outlined, if not having a full first draft done, as I can. Um, fighting the block on book three and just keep going and then I can concentrate on edits and one day doing releases. There's, like I said, there's things going on this year that I can't talk about right now, um, but I will go into in another video that um, are gonna make life a little challenging but 
if I can focus over the next few months and get as much done as I can, I think do, focusing on edits um, will be a lot easier to concentrate on for a while. So, um, and getting at least, getting a good enough um, first draft or outline will help me get a first draft down easier if I do have to um, work on writing for a while. So, yeah. So that is the Fearless Writers tag. Uh, like I said, I will link Ray's channel and Kim's channel in the card and in the description. And I highly encourage you guys to check them both out. Um, Ray is a debut author tuber. He's wonderful and I am so excited for him. Also check out his podcast called The Fear Fallacy. He has one episode up right now. I don't know how often he's going to be releasing episodes, but um, the first one was really good and um, I think you guys will really enjoy it. So please support him and um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, all of my social media links are listed below. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I have a Patreon page, a blog, website, and a Skillshare class currently up. All of those links are below. So please check them all out and like this video, do all the things, and I will have another video up very soon. Bye!